another Monday, another story for you. <laughs> there aren't that many that come up that are set in the north of England, and as I was lucky enough to spend my formative years there, I couldn't miss this opportunity to uh, tell you a little story about um, a part of the world that means a lot to me still. So, very interesting one this. Nice, slow, creepy build-up. I hope you enjoy listening to it as much as I did uh, narrating it. So, you know what time it is. Get yourself that favourite drink, sit back and relax, because it's time to listen. So, here I am, laying down on my stomach, helpless, darkness stifling both my thoughts and my cries for help. I was too deep underground now, all sound drowned out by the earth. With my last moments ahead of me, I began to reflect on how the hell I ended up in this position. I'd recently received a tip-off to investigate a small town in northern England. It was a minute, silent town that hardly manifested on any map I could get my hands on. The history of this place was as obscure as the town itself. The only background information I'd received about the location was regarding the construction of the power plant that was finalised in the early 80s. Before then, the town had heavily relied on coal from its coal mines in order to keep the residents warm during the hard, grueling winters. However, the most striking news that seemed to plague the town concerned the various reports of missing people and the supposed continued operation of the coal mines, despite their long-ago shutdown. Accounts of thick, black smoke slithering from behind the grey ridges that tore along the horizon from across the fields that surrounded the town. Nonetheless, I could not fathom what the connection could be between the missing persons and these reports of the redundant coal mine operations. I needed the money desperately, so I ventured into this town with the intent of investigating these suspicions of missing people thoroughly. I started with the most appropriate place my mind could conjure up, the fields. These fields stretched for miles, scarred with snaking paths that cut straight through the tall grass and marshlands all extending out towards the ridges. I'd also been warned beforehand of the marshes that were highly prevalent in the fields. So with this in mind, I set off on my investigation on one of these paths that had been mulched into a slick mud by various people, probably hikers. It seemed like this would be an idyllic, scenic place, with the right weather, of course. At this moment in time, the skies were overcast and grey, a miserable blanket draped over the sun that seemed to have disappeared. The majority of my journey was uneventful. The same images of tall grass, gangly trees and rising hills crossed my vision for hours. That was until through random chance, I somehow wandered onto a path that seemed to be untouched, merely a subtle one metre wide line which I considered to be a path. I'd probably wandered onto this trail whilst my mind was also wandering. With a heavy sigh, I scolded myself for not being more attentive reminding myself of the warning of the marshes the locals had given me. With a newfound caution, 
I prepared to turn back, which was when something very odd struck my peripheral vision. It was a splash of color that prominently stood out from the generic green grass. It was hmm, sky blue. Whipping my head around to focus on the out-of-place object, I saw it was a long-sleeved shirt. The color hadn't been as vibrant as I first thought. The blue was darkened and made dull from what I predicted was years of exposure to the elements. Why was this here? It looked like it belonged to an adult, and it also looked like it had been here for a while with streaks of grime soiling the wool material it was made out of. I didn't touch it. I just stared with curiosity slowly building inside my mind. I simply lifted the lens of my camera and snapped a quick photo. The faded trail beckoned me onwards. Perhaps there were more items of interest further down this path. I continued and discovered more carelessly strewn about clothing. But these items did not seem to belong to the same person. All were of different sizes, some seeming to belong to younger children and others to larger individuals. I took photos of all that I came across. I suddenly became aware of the rapidly setting sun around me. It was getting late and I needed to turn back. I found nothing else and began to return to my starting point. Speaking of which, <laughs> where was I? I was perplexed as I glanced behind me only to notice that there was no longer a path behind me. Only tall grass and a line of trees were visible. Now utterly perplexed, I began to walk aimlessly, attempting to find some noticeable feature that would allow me to make my way back, but there was nothing. Around me appeared the same mundane pattern of trees, grass, and hill. Panic began to swell as the encroaching darkness crept in. With the sun dipping below the evening clouds, I decided to climb upwards to try and gain an idea of where I was. I reached the top of a grassy knoll and searched around me, scanning for a route out of these fields. I did find something, but it wasn't a root. My eyes fell upon dark columns of smoke, rising towards the murky heavens. With disbelief infesting my mind, I began to ponder. Was it really true? <laughs> it couldn't be. I dismissed the thought. I had to focus on getting back. Then again, the columns seemed to intrigue me, and, like I said, I really needed the money. My feet began to stagger towards the columns, sluggish with fatigue. Now, I was no more than a fish caught on a fishing hook. I had taken the bait. I began to draw closer to the smoke. It loomed larger in the sky as I gradually made my way towards the plumes. Just a little closer. Not long now. That was when I noticed the noise that had been hiding amongst the background chorus of chirping birds and rustling autumn leaves. It was subtle Yet it grew louder and louder as my weary steps came ever closer to the smoke. It was a low rumble. My mind immediately jumped to the idea 
that this was the mines still in operation. Yet I knew this was impossible, for they had been shut down a long time ago. Tucking this thought in the back of my head, I continue going towards the black smoke. I'd been traversing the fields for hours, with no change of scenery to bless my eyes. It was the same grass everywhere. That was until I clicked onto an abrupt change in the land. The green terrain withered away into an asphalt-colored landscape. I had reached my destination, the former coal pits. Flat land stretched out in front of me. I jogged to the edge of this flat wasteland, only to observe a large crater with openings in the side. It was obvious what this was. I'd also just realized that the smoke had ceased, as had the rumble. Bizarrely, I had the idea of searching one of the mine shafts. <sighs> Looking back on it now, it was a foolish idea. Yet I still followed through with my idiotic plan. Cautiously I made my way down the side of this crater, towards one of the openings. It was obscured by thorns and vegetation and barely visible. I decided to crawl through a hardly noticeable gap in this wall of vegetation. With great effort, I pushed my body through and came out the other side into pitch blackness, covered in scratches and dirt. Tapping into my resourceful side, I illuminated the place with my camera flash. At the very least, it would give me some concept of where I was. Raising my camera, I clicked the button, and the bright flash covered every inch of the shaft it was now in. It revealed to me ashen, grey walls, supported by wooden beams that had, surprisingly for their age, not been rotted. In fact, they appeared new, as if somebody was still maintaining them. But how could this be possible? Searching the walls with my hands, I clawed my way around the tunnel, clumsily finding my way deeper and deeper. As I got deeper still, the smell began to intestate the area, becoming more pungent as I descended. It became so strong that I began to gag Heavily. Almost vomiting, I realized that it smelled like something dead. My feet reached a level ground, and the descent had abruptly come to an end. Raising my camera once more, I activated the flash. I could have turned back then, and now I dearly wished that I had. I had discovered where the missing people went. I saw piles of corpses stacked one on top of another. Their clothes were torn and shredded. They had been dragged down here. This was made evident by the scratches and cuts I could see on their skin. An incinerator was next to this horrifying sight. Reaching out with reluctant hands, I touched its surface. I immediately leapt backwards as I discovered it was hot. The source of the smell had also been discovered along with the bodies. Tears welled up in my eyes and stung as the smell intensified. The smell of rot. The coal dust my fingers had made contact with countless times. It wasn't coal dust. Glaring at my shaking hands, I found that they were not covered in coal, but the ashes from burning bodies. To this point, I'd always found it odd how I'd discover not a single lump of coal. 
Sure, it was abandoned long ago, but surely that wouldn't mean the source of coal had run dry. There should be at least some trace of coal here. But there was nothing. Only the coal dust. That was when the realization struck me like a hammer to anvil, sending sparks of horror into my mind. <laughs> there never was any coal. I now knew how the town was kept warm during the winter, and the thought sickened me. The locals were all deceived and given their power. Meanwhile, their own kind burned down here. Now I moved on to the next thought that occupied my mind. This place was still in operation. It was too late when I came to this revelation, and, blinded by my shock, I had not heard the creeping footsteps behind me. However, I did hear the words that froze the blood in my veins. Ah, more fuel for the fire, eh? Thanks for taking the time to drop by and watch this video. You know what would make me a happy doctor? Hitting that like button, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Go on, I've got plenty more stories to tell you.